Can Dick Grayson possibly win a war against the Bloodhaven PD? Well, let's hop into the pages of Nightwing issue number 93 and find out together, shall we? So then, picking up more or less directly from where the last issue left off, Heartless, that mysterious heart-stealing serial killer who has been hanging out in the background of this brand new series, goes to meet Blockbuster. Roland, as you might have guessed, has no time for this creepazoid, but he just keeps on talking. In fact, he keeps on monologuing a fact of which Blockbuster directly calls out, which I think is really funny when one villain says another villain is monologuing. What does Heartless actually want? Up until now, his motivations have been rather mysterious. Well, it seems that he wants Bloodhaven. He wants to hold the city in his hand, and that can't happen with Blockbuster also claiming to be king. Heartless hazards a guess that Roland is more businessman than Kingpin, and as such, he's willing to buy Bloodhaven out from under him in exchange for, well, whatever he should want. Now, if you like me, you're probably thinking, oh, is this the moment where Block Blockbuster says, I'll give you the keys to Bloodhaven, but only if you kill my most hated foe, Nightwing. Well, actually, they end up swerving us on that in a big bad way. Blockbuster figures he's had just enough of listening to this crazy guy, and he throws his entire desk at him, which in turn ends up sending Heartless hurling out a window. Well, I mean, say what you want about Blockbuster, but even a villain like him has standards. Now, what's going on with Nightwing right now? Well, he's trying to clean up all the graffiti and destruction that was wrought by a bunch of off-duty cops in the previous issue. After assassins and gangsters weren't enough to take out Nightwing, the police decided to try themselves, and well, they ended up just as successful. And when stopping the Haven Project cloak and dagger style didn't work, the cops decided now would be the best time to just open fire on Nightwing at sunup and hope for the best. You know, I'd like to say that this was a hilarious comic book exaggeration of how the police operate in America, but I mean, hey, you read the papers, don't you? What do you mean their body cams just so happen to be turned off at that moment? When the cops can't kill Nightwing, they decide they'll do the next best thing and literally try to run him out of town. Nightwing leads them on one hell of a chase through the city streets, before eventually Dick figures maybe he should head on off to Gotham and visit Barbara until the heat dies down over here. Barbara, of course, had helped Dick in the previous issue snap a bunch of pictures of all the different cops who were actively committing crimes off the clock. This means the good guys have a smoking gun and all the evidence in the world to take down the corrupt Commissioner McLean, in doing so taking out one of Blockbuster's biggest supporters. Dick vehemently thanks Barbara for all the hard work that she's done, and in doing so even slips out the words, I love you, which is a beautiful, cute little scene that made a bunch of shippers very angry this week. Personally, I never get mad about relationships because ultimately it doesn't matter. Some of these characters have been around for 80 plus years. They're gonna date a dozen different people long after you and I are both dead and in the ground. Yes, it's perfectly fun and acceptable to have your own preferred romantic pairings. Lord knows I have several of my own, but I don't make it the cornerstone of my fandom personality. Now, by the time Dick Grayson actually returns to Haven, the cops have already shown up in force. They might not have been able to destroy this brand new outreach program. So instead, they've opted to completely choke the life out of it by setting up all around the clock, making it so this community project that was supposed to serve as an outreach to the homeless and at risk risk youths won't be seeing as many of them because, well, the police traditionally hassle homeless youths. And as an extra grim exclamation point to all of this, Commissioner McLean plans to go on television in just a few minutes and inform the media how crime statistics have soared since Haven opened its doors. Even though it was McLean and his officers who were out here committing the crimes on behalf of their master blockbuster. What Dick does next is so smooth and so cool, he lets the dirty cop talk for a little bit before eventually using his own words to hang him out to dry. Oh really, these homeless kids are to blame for the crimes you say, but there's no actual actual footage of them committing any crimes because all the security cameras on the block went down around the same time. Interesting, that doesn't sound like something homeless kids could do. Oh, you say the assailants were masked, so there's no way of knowing who did what? Ah, that's funny because you just said there was no security footage. How would you know if they were masked or not, unless that is, of course, you sent the cops to do it. Luckily, Nightwing was able to unmask them, and now he's disseminated their identities to the entire internet. Meaning that no one actually finished listening 
to the commissioner's speech. Instead, everyone was online weighing in on the biggest corruption scandal in Bloodhaven's very corrupt history. It would seem that sweeping reforms are on their way and Dick Grayson and Haven are all to thank for these good works. But even though Nightwing may have just managed to deliver one hell of a blow to Blockbuster and his conspiracy, another great evil is still massing out there. You see, Heartless was able to survive his fall. And that is because, as we discover in this issue, he's not entirely human. He's enhanced and upgraded his own physical form so much he's more machine now than man, twisted and evil. It would seem that the only part of him that's even legit anymore is, well, his heart, but he's burning through those faster than he can count. Which means all those hearts he's been stealing from the people of Bloodhaven, he's not just keeping them as sick trophies, he's actually using them. And it's on that macabre note right there the comic comes to a close. And so that was Nightwing issue number 93, everybody. And overall, I enjoyed it, even if it was kind of a more simplistic sequel to the issue we had seen before. Seeing Nightwing take on an entire crooked police force and come out the other side was pretty damn cool. It was also nice to learn more about Heartless. He's been the big original villain since this series began, but we honestly don't know anything about him. It was also cool to see Heartless juxtaposed with Blockbuster, and in them we see that they really are two different sorts of villains. To borrow a Dungeons and Dragons term, they're lawful evil and chaotic evil. Heartless is also very choosy about what hearts he steals and uses, only taking them from people who he believes to have been loved and will be missed. We're still not entirely sure why that is, but we can totally see why he's gunning for someone like Nightwing Dick Grayson, who is so almost universally beloved. Overall, I'd give this one a very positive 7.5 out of 10. The parts I liked, I really liked, but there was some parts that I felt were a little thin in the story department, but not hey everyone, by much. It's your old pal Cape Jewel again, thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out my Amazon link down in the description? Yes, that's right, the Cape Jewel channel officially has its own Amazon storefront now. You can pick up a comic or anything else for that matter, and if you did, you'd really be helping me in the channel. So with that out of the way, everyone, I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.